Hey there, Gunpla fans of YouTube. It's time for another Gunpla review. And today, we're going to be taking a look at the real grade Force Impulse Gundam. This is a pretty new kit, one of the newest real grades, and I've uh, spent the last couple weeks uh, building it. You might have seen some of my uh, live streams. And anyway, it's time to uh, take a look at the finished kit. So, here it is. And right off, we're going to start off with the kit and its separated uh, components here. Now, when you're building this, uh, they have you build it in the individual components. So we're going to take a look at the components first, and then we'll get it all together and look at the articulation and the um, accessories that come with this kit here. Alright, so uh, first off in the book, they have you build the Core Splendor, and that is this little fighter right here. Now I did do some additional uh, painting on this to kind of liven it up a little bit and get it a little closer looking to the original uh, line art for this here. Um, otherwise this thing comes looking kind of very plain looking and it kind of feels a little bit unfinished with uh, just, a, just the way it looks straight out of the kit here. Um, I did paint in the frame on the canopy. I would probably at least suggest maybe trying to do that if you can. It just makes it look a little nicer instead of having just a piece of clear plastic there. It does come with uh, landing gears. They're pretty uh, basic. They just uh, plug right into the bottom. And additionally, it does come with these two little uh, optional missile pods that you can stick on the bottom of the wings here. There is a little peg hole on the bottom here, so you can plug it into any uh, action base to have it on display. And after that, the next component they have you build is the chest flyer, which is uh, this component of the Impulse Gundam here itself. They also have you build the beam rifle and the shield for this as well. Um, unlike in most other kits in which you would probably build the weapons after you build the Gundam, they instead have you build the weapons kind of in the middle of the uh, manual here. And that's pretty much just for this. And they show you how to transform it into this mode as well. Um, in terms of transformations, this is not that hard to do. Just kind of move the arms and shoulders around. Just gotta make sure you get them in the right spot. Um, they just when you put them back just make sure you do exactly the reverse of what you did to put it here otherwise you can very easily get the arms backwards <laughs> which I've done several times without uh, realizing it uh, you can see on the back here how it just kind of looks that way uh, there, there is a action base adapter you can kind of stick on the back of this here and it just plugs in right there so you can have this displayed flying through the air like this, like a half-broken Gundam. And the other part here is the leg flyer, which is pretty much just as it is described. It is just a pair of legs. Um, as you can see, it has a sort of a Z-bin, which is sort of like what you've seen with the Zeta Gundam and some other transformable uh, Gundams. Um, in the case of this, I don't really think it really looks that good this way, but I mean, who am I to argue? That's just how the way the impulse Gundam is. I will say one thing that uh, the way this joint works, there's little plastic tabs that kind of keep it locked in place. Um, I would be careful about doing this too many times because I'm kind of worried that those little plastic tabs are going to wear out on this eventually. So I probably, probably would not transform this too many times here. Alright, so let's go ahead and transform this into the Impulse Gundam. You're going to want to take the uh, Core Splendor first, and obviously you want to take these little missiles off here, because you don't need those. And if you had the landing gears on here, go ahead and take those off. Alright, now that you got the uh, Core Splendor this way here, what you want to do is move the little fins inside this way, and you tuck the wings in. You're going to tuck the nose down like this, and what you're going to do is you're going to bend the front half of the core splendor down this way. You're not going to bend it all the way down first, because what you're going to do is you're going to take the leg flyer. There's this little clamp mechanism on the end right here, you can see, and the nose of the core splendor just goes right in there, like so, and then the clamp locks around it to hold this in place. Then you can put the rest of the core splendor down. And while we have the legs here anyway, we might as well straighten these out. It's very simple to move these joints and straighten them out. Just like so. Very easy. And go ahead and uh, flatten the feet out as well. 
so we have this ready to go here. All right, so next up we've got the chest flyer here. So to transform this into the mode it needs to be, we have to kind of get the arms back to where they need to be here. So you can kind of spread these out a little bit here on for joints. Then try and move them this way and then down. And you're going to push the arm joint back in place here. So this way, down, and put the arm joint back in place. Straighten the arms up. And this little piece here in the front was kind of almost covers the face of the gun. I'm just going to pop that down and just kind of straighten everything out here however you want it. And it's pretty much ready to go. Okay, so now that you got uh, both parts transformed, all you gotta really do is just shove the chest on top of the core splinter, and it should lock right in place. And you now have yourself an impulse Gundam. Now the shield itself is supposed to transform as well, so we'll go ahead and do that, but it's easier to probably take that off the Gundam here. This just spreads out. You may need to get your fingernails on the end here to pull this apart. There we go. And again, you may need your fingernails to kind of pull the side pieces out. I find it easier to grab them from the back right here. So I'm going to get this one out. There we go. There we go. And just go ahead and stick that back on. And now you basically got the Impulse Gundam standard, the standard Impulse Gundam. Okay, so while I have the Impulse Gundam in its uh, standard configuration here, this is probably a good opportunity to look at the articulation of the kit here. So for the head here, I'm going to look about that far back, look that far down. There is a double joint in the neck there, you can turn it all the way around, as so. Now for the arms here, you got a little front shoulder bend right there. Arm can come up about to about to right there. You do have a double joint in the arm right there. Uh, this front part of the arm can swivel around. This little peg hole holds the shield, so you can maneuver the shield to wherever you want to with here. And the hands are on a ball ball joint. Now in the chest here, we do have an opening cockpit hatch. You're probably going to need a toothpick to get this open. And it opens up like so. Now there is no uh, pilot seat inside of there. It's just kind of a hatch with a little foil sticker that goes inside of there. Not, not a whole lot to see inside of there. Close that back up. Now in terms of chest articulation, it can turn like so. It is kind of limited because the uh, core splinter kind of gets in the way a little bit here. But this is about as far as you can turn it. Uh, there is no side to side on this chest at all. And uh, th this kit does not really have an ab crunch. So it won't really bend down here, but it will bend up inside the torso here, which is a little strange. So it moves like that. So the joint for this is actually up in the upper torso, not down here, and that's because the uh, core splinter is attached down below, so there's really no joint down here at all. So It's an interesting compromise that Bandai had to do here, but it is a little weird to me. So, But you do get a little bit of a bend in the torso, even if it is a little strange. Alright, and moving on down the kit, front skirt armor, move up like so. Side skirts, they can draw a little ball joint. They won't really move up too far, but you can just move them up out of the way like so for the legs. Back skirt armor will pop right off if you move it too far. And it moves up about like that normally without popping it off. All right, now with the legs here, there is a drop down joint inside of here. Normally, if you don't uh, drop it down, you can get a kick out with the leg about that far here. If you drop it down, let's see if I can show you here as we're doing this. You definitely get more range out of it. In fact, it makes the whole wind pulse Gundam taller if you do that. And with that, you can get kick about like so. 
little bit more range out of this, but it opens up the side a lot more so you can do the splits with this very easily. In fact, it can go beyond normal splits here. Upper leg swivel right there. A knee joint, double knee joint. It's an okay looking knee joint. Doesn't do a whole lot. This uh, front knee section just kind of sticks out a little further. Kind of wish it would have moved along with the knee like that, like so, but it doesn't. I mean, that's just the way it is. A little thruster on the back of the leg. You can move that up and down. Okay, and with the uh, foot here, you can bend back about that far. Toe can bend back. Uh, it was actually part of the transformation, but it can bend all the way back if it want to. Bending forward, can bend about that far forward here. Side to side. It's not bad side to side. It's pretty good, I'd say. It is in a, there is a double joint in here. The joint, there's a lower joint and there's an upper joint up in here, so as you can kind of see how it looks there. And this old ankle armor. And it's, on, it's attached to the front here, up in the little ball joint. It doesn't move around too much, it moves with the ankle, so it works pretty well. Okay, so next up here at the end here, we have the Silhouette Flyer and the Force Silhouette Pack. So this is pretty much the equivalent of the Ale Striker Pack that came with the Strike Gundam. Enables flight for the Impulse Gundam and additional maneuverability in space here is sort of the standard uh, pack for the Impulse Gundam here. Now we do have the Silhouette Flyer attached to here. You can take that off, like so. It's a little extension that sticks out the back and plugs into the back, back of this right here. Just pop that right back in. Uh, just like with the Core Splendor, I did a little bit of additional painting on this just to kind of make it look closer to the actual line art. You don't have to do that. It, probably, it pretty much looks okay the way it is, so that's just an optional thing. Otherwise, there's really not a whole lot to this. It's a little peg hole in the bottom, bottom for uh, sticking it onto an action base right there. Alright, well while I have this here, uh, let's look at the articulation on the uh, Force Silhouette Pack here. Uh, the main wings, they can move up and down like this because they are um, ball joints. Move them back like so. Uh, these bottom fins are on ball joints as well. You can kind of just move these around as wherever you want. You move these down out of the way, you can pop the main wings down like so. And while it's on the impulse gun, it kind of looks like it's on a standby, stand down mode, I guess, if you want. The beam sabers are on these little jo ball joints right here. You can move those up and down out of the way. And there are these little additional thrusters on the sides of the bottom segments here. Let's see if I can get those out. Just come open just like that. Alright, so before I put the uh, four silhouette pack on the Imbos Gundam, I would recommend uh, putting it on the action base. This is the action base adapter. It works both for the leg flyer and the uh, Gundam itself here. It just kind of it slots into the back right here. Get the right way around here. Just like that. And you stick it on your action base. Just like so. And that'll help keep it on there once you get the uh, silhouette pack on there. Alright, as for putting the silhouette pack on there, it basically just plugs into these two holes on the back of the torso. Very easy. Just plug it right in, and there you go. You have the Force Impulse Gundam. Alright, so we'll probably go over the accessories here real quick. We've already seen the beam rifle here. Pretty nice beam rifle. I, I, I like it. It looks pretty good. And you got the uh, shield here, the transforming shield, expands out. Again, pretty nice. No problem with that. Uh, if you have your beam sabers, pretty standard on there. You have a uh, clear pink beam blades that go with those. And just like with the strike gun, um, you get a couple of uh, folding knives. They look uh, pretty similar to what was on the strike gun. Maybe it's a little bit more pointy here. They will fold up and they will go into the side skirts. Like so, if I can get it open. Pop it open like so. And I think this one goes on this side. I hope. Just slot in right there. Well, nope. Get it in. There we go, and slide it in. Alright, just with most kits, you do get your standard hand options. Add the uh, standard fist option, you get a pair of those. 
you get one trigger holding hand for the beam rifle. That's on there right now. You do get a pair of standard holding hands. These are mainly going to be used for the beam savers. You get a pair of open expressive hands. And you do get one additional left hand. This one lacks the little peg notch inside of it. As far as I know, this is for just for holding on to the handle on the shield. Um, I, d I find that this doesn't really hold the shield by itself. You still have to plug the shield into the arm socket to kind of keep it in place. Otherwise, it just doesn't hold it. It just kind of flops around and falls apart. And last but not, not least, we shall not forget about our tiny little figure of Shin Asuka that comes with this. Okay, so some uh, final thoughts about the uh, Real Grade 4 Impulse Gundam here. Overall, this is a pretty easy build. Um, like most of the newer Real Grades, it makes very minimal use of the advanced MS joint. Uh, you really only get a couple parts of that, and they only go in the core splinter and the upper torso to uh, facilitate that uh, upper torso bend that I showed you earlier here. Um, like I said, the build is pretty easy. Um, the real grade line is kind of moving more and more towards being something of like a smaller scale master grade and towards a, in terms of build, so that's still very much uh, true here. Now in terms of uh, potential issues with the kit, um, I did mention the uh, little plastic tabs that are inside the knees that control the double joint. Like I said, I think there's a the potential for those to wear out, so I probably wouldn't I wouldn't bend those too many times just on the off chance that they may kind of wear out and then you'll start having problems with the knee staying in place. Um, I did run into a problem with these little uh, additional thrusters on the force uh, silhouette pack. This one on this side, I think I got in there correctly, but the one on the other side uh, did not want to go in correctly, and it nearly bent and broke the little plastic tabs on the inside of the, of the part off. So I'll be very careful about putting those in. Um, I did have to go in with my knife and kind of file the pegs down just a little bit to make it easier for the uh, first part to actually clip in there. So you actually have to push it in and push it in all the way to it clips. And if you know it uh, didn't exactly right, it ends up pushing the little plastic tabs in there kind of out of the way and kind of warping them. And uh, this one on this side doesn't really open up all the way now because of that. Um, I would be care also careful handling the uh, around the head with the V-fin. The V-fin is very thin and very sharp on this thing. And I think there's a very good chance, if you're not careful, you can probably bend these or break them because uh, they are very delicate. Um, other than that, it's uh, pretty much okay for a real great kit. I feel like it's pretty standard now for a real great kit. Um, I don't think this kit does anything really exceptionally amazing that other real great kits I don't think do better. But it's also not a bad real great either, so I think this would be an above average real great kit to me, so I probably would. If I had to give it out of 10, I'd probably rate it maybe an 8 or a 9 out of 10. It's pretty good, but it's not going to be in my like top 5 real grades. So, but it, is a, but it is a pretty easy build, and I think the end result does look pretty good here for it. So anyway guys, that's going to be it for my review of this kit here. Um, I, hope you, I hope that kind of informed you a little bit about this kit here, and it, deciding if you want to get that, and just to kind of be aware of some of the couple issues I kind of ran into with this kit while I was building it here. Um, the only other thing I might add, it comes with the standard real grade uh, sticker markings. It's a little on the heavier side, I'd say, but it's really not too bad, I'd say. I mean, you can use them or not use them. It's up to you. I think they look okay, but I, I tend to use the stickers anyway, so. Anyway, guys, uh, that's going to be it for this review. Um, I will see if I can uh, do some reviews on some other older kits I have. Um, not going to be building anything new for the immediate future. Not uh, that's that's on my schedule as far as I'm aware. So, <laughs> but anyway, guys, uh, that's going to be it for here. That's going to be it for um, this review. And I will hope you guys will stick around and see what else I got coming. All right, bye bye, and take care.